Hi everybody and welcome back for another 1908 game. This is uh, once again uh, May 4th. Let me make sure. Yep, May 4th, 1908. We have uh, today for you the Tigers and the Browns. You can tell that they're close. Just to uh, remind you here of what's happening the American League. The Athletics won today. They're starting to take over and look at that 10-1 and record at home. That's what um, has done it for them. They're 9-1 and in their last 10 uh, games. Browns are now in second place. They were leading the American League for a little while. They're a game and a half behind the Athletics. And uh, the Tigers now have moved up to fourth. They were down in seventh for a little while, and they've uh, inched up. Of course, they haven't inched up very far past anybody. They're nine and nine. Um, and the American League is finally starting to, uh, we're starting to see some uh, teams move up to the top. Of course, we would, if you know your history, you're looking out for the White Sox and the Naps, who were up there with the Tigers in real life. Um, but uh, so far, um, it's uh, still fairly competitive, and uh, we'll see what happens. Nothing that happens in this game is going to have a major impact on this. Um, if the Browns lose, however, it will muddle things up once again here in the middle a little bit. But uh, it's going to be probably a couple more of these uh, days in game before we figure out who the uh, front runners actually are in the American League. We're about 20 games into it, which means that it's still quite early in the season. But um, you get a pretty good idea after about 20 games of who to expect and who not to expect to do well. Germany Schaefer up here now for uh, the Tigers to lead off. And he rolls a 66 for a zero, which is a very good roll for him. And then a 55 for a two. There's a triple, leadoff triple from Schaefer. That will bring up Bill Coughlin. Coughlin is uh, hitting 276, um, and uh, Schaefer's fast at third. We might as well bunt. Let's see if we can get that run in. It rolls a 21 for a 30. That's a foul strike, um, and uh, it's an 0 oh and 1 count now on Coughlin. And the next uh, rolls a 45. Uh, let me see here. There we go. 45 for a 14. There's a bunt, and uh, that hits uh, the pitch hits Coughlin, and he goes down to first base. He is injured for the uh, remainder of the game, so we got to uh, come up with a uh, third baseman here to come in for him. We can put in uh, Killeffer, who's at least fast. It would probably make the most sense. So that's what we're going to do. Red Killeffer comes in, and he's going to be the new first baseman. And I'm going to take a quick look at this card again, and yeah, he has those 11s. So the question here is, do you bunt or hit and run? And I think we're going to do a hit and run with Matty McIntyre up there. Cobb, by the way, hitting fourth now because um, he's been in a slump. McIntyre up there hitting 263. And he rolls a 22 for a 7. That's exactly the roll that you want in this situation. That is a uh, single to right field that will score the runner from third. Kaleffer goes over to third. And uh, that makes this a one nothing game just like that. And here comes Ty Cobb hitting 278 now. So the uh, average is getting up there a little bit for Cobb. McIntyre does have that 11 as well. So we'll do some hit and run as well and see what uh, Tyrus can do. And he rolls a 62 for a 12. And that's a uh, ground ball over to first base. Jones grabs that, goes to the bag himself. McIntyre moves up to second. Um, they stay out of the double play. There's one out now with Claude Rossman up. And the Tigers hoping to really break this game open. Claude rolls a 36 for 14. And he walks. That loads the bases. Second walk given up. or Sorry, first walk given up by Deneen. That's right. The first one was a hit by pitch. Red Downs up there now, hitting 273. And uh, he rolls a 33 for a 7, and that's a single that will score 2. Rossman goes over to third base and will stay there. Downs on at first. It's 3 nothing Tigers. Here comes Boss Schmidt, and uh, Deneen might not uh, last uh, this full inning. Schmidt up there rolls a 54 for a 45. That's a fly ball to right field. Uh, Hartzell's got that for the out, two away. And here is uh, Sean, uh, Sam Crawford, excuse me. He rolls a 35 for a 9. That's a single over short, and that will score one. Send downs over to uh, second base. It's a 4 nothing game. And here is the pitcher, Ed Summers. And uh, we'll leave Bill in for a little bit longer, but uh, they've batted around here. Summers rolls a 56 for a 34. That's going to be a, a pop-up over to Ferris on the left side. And finally, we go to the bottom of the first inning. Boy, look at all that offense. Four hits for the Tigers, four runs, and they left two on. We go to the bottom of the first. It's Ed Summers up there now pitching for the Tigers against Hobe Ferris. Ferris rolls a 14, 40, 43, and uh, the little E rolls a 16. That'll change it to a 22. That is an error on Summers, who uh, boots at the first chance he gets, and that's the first error of the ball game. Here is uh, Tom Jones. We'll rule that one again as uh, I wasn't looking where I was ruling. And the rule now is a 25 for an 8. That is a ground ball over to Killeffer. The third baseman throws to first for the out. Ferris moves up to second. One away. And <clears throat> it is uh, Roy Hartzell up there. So this is the other Hartzell. Notice the difference in spellings between um, this Hartzell and the one we saw in Philadelphia two days ago. Um, <clears throat> and uh, when you deal with old newspapers, this really is a problem because uh, they would spell the names whoever they felt like. I don't know which one is correct. Either one's probably fine. They're probably interchangeable, honestly. Hartzell rolls a 61 for a 30. Fly ball over to McIntyre. The left fielder has it for the out two away, and George Stone comes up, and I did it again. Let's try this again. 
a little too violent with my rolls and stone rolls an 11 for a zero. His next roll is a 62 for a six. That'll be a double to left center field. Stone ends up over at second. That scores the runner. It's a four to one game and the Browns have their first hit and that'll bring up Jimmy Williams. So a lot of offense here today. Williams rolls a 36 for 33. There's the little E roll. It's a 41 out of the range. That's a pop up over to the shortstop and Schaefer has it for the out. We go to the top of the second and who is it but Germany Schaefer up there to lead it off. He rolls a 12 for 24, hits a ground ball over to uh, the shortstop Wallace, who throws the first for the out, one away. And it's uh, Red Killeffer, who's um, happy to have this opportunity, gets some defensive innings in and uh, gets some at-bats in. He's uh, uh, hitting 333, five plate appearances so far. And uh, on-base percentage of 500, how did he do that with five plate appearances? Anyway, uh, Keffer uh, rolls a 44 for an eight. That's a single, and then the little C gets him, and he gets thrown out. Hit number five, though, for the uh, Tigers as uh, Kaleffer is thrown out trying to steal. Two away. Matty McIntyre now rolls a 44 for a seven. There's a single to right field, and that'll bring up Ty Cobb. And let the debates begin if you listened to yesterday afternoon's video about uh, stolen bases, what system works, and so on. Cobb up there and uh, two outs. Uh, Cobb uh, so far today is 0 for 1, uh, hitting 275, 310 on base percentage. He needs to get those numbers up to be like Ty Cobb, and he rolls a 61 for a 40. That's a little ground ball over again to the first baseman, and Jones does it to the bag himself. So Cobb and Jones with a little bit of magnetism. We go to the bottom of the second, and it's Jim Stevens for the Browns leading off. And the catcher uh, rolls a 32 for a 26. Ground ball over to Downs, the second baseman. Throws the first for the out, one away. Danny Hoffman up there. Rolls a 31 for, or 13, sorry, for a 14. little dyslexia there for you, and he will walk. It's the first walk given up by Summers, and that'll bring up Bobby Wallace with the runner on at first. Bobby rolls a 21 for 30. Fly ball to left field. McIntyre's there for the out. One away. Two away, sorry. It's Bill Deneen. Two away, and that's important because Deneen won't bunt. Should be bunting more often, I know. And here comes Deneen rolling a 25 for a 9, and that beats out an infield hit. Deneen ends up on at first base. Hoffman goes over to second. And here's Hope Ferris. Two hits now for the Browns. One belongs to the pitcher. <clears throat> Ferris rolls a 25 for an 8, and that's a ground ball over to Killeffer. Third baseman throws to first for the out. We go to the top of the third. It'll be Claude Rossman to lead this off for the Tigers, and he rolls a 31 for an 8, and that's a base hit, and uh, the little uh, C strikes again. He's thrown out stealing. One away. Red Downs. Red Downs rolls a 46 for a 27. That's a, a, a ground ball to third base. Ferris has it. Hope throws to first for the out. Two away. Bosch uh, Schmidt up there. He rolls a 16 for a 28. This time it's a ground ball over to the uh, shortstop. Uh, where are you? Wallace, there you are at the end of the uh, lineup who throws the first for the out. We go to the bottom of the third. I'll tell you something. I've, I know I complain from time to time about the games that I love to play, and this one would be really nice if the screen were larger, if I could enlarge this to fit up the entire screen. Um, if I could change that. You see, I can't. Can't do anything with it. It won't let me do anything at all. Um, there is a way if you go over to about where you can change uh, the uh, application size, but it only gives you these three sizes. I think this is a limitation caused by the programming language that was used. It'd be nice though, if I can make this full screen and have uh, the game tell me who's playing at what position, then I wouldn't have to keep looking over there at the, uh, at the lineup, which um, is a little bit uh, off-putting, but so it is. Um, Tom Jones up here, bottom of the third for the Browns. Rolls a 32 for a 26. That's a ground ball over to Downs. The second baseman makes the play, throws to first for the out, one away. Roy Hartzell up there now rolls a 35 for a 9. That's going to be a pop up over to the third baseman, Kaleffer. Two gone. It's George Stone up there hitting 243, 273 on base percentage, somewhat woeful. He had the double earlier today, driving in the only Browns run. Rolls a 12 for a 25. Here comes the little E roll. It's a 35 out of the range, and so it's a uh, ground ball over to the second baseman Downs, who throws it to first again for the out. We go to the top of the fourth. Lots of ground balls in this replay. Man, Sam Crawford to lead this off for the Tigers. Rolls a 55 for a 7. That's a single to right field, and uh, there's Wahoo Sam on it first, and that'll bring up Ed Summers, the pitcher, who's uh, 0 for 1 so far today, 0 for everything this season. He's going to bunt. And he rolls a 45 for a 36. That's going to be a pass ball that will be charged to Stevens. If you watched yesterday's game, uh, the uh, Diamond Mine game, there were all sorts of wild pitches charged to uh, Gene Bearden. Well, we've had a uh, passed ball here in this one. How about that? And Crawford ends up over a second base. Summer's still trying to bunt. This time rolls a 22 for an 8. That's a good bunt over to Deneen. The pitcher throws over to the uh, uh, second baseman, Williams, covering a first. Crawford moves up to third. There's one away now for the Tigers. Here's Germany Schaefer. 
Rolls a 22 for an A, and that's a clean single over second base that scores the runner. Nine hits for the Tigers, and I said this about Bill Deneen before. He's not going to last long. They'll bring up Red Kaleffer, and here comes the hit and run. And they're trying to uh, do the uh, <clears throat> do the uh, uh, final blow here, but unfortunately, Kaleffer rolls a 42 for a 13. It's a strike him out and a strike him out, throw him out as he can't connect, and uh, we go to the bottom of the fourth. Five to one now, Tigers with the lead. And up comes Jimmy Williams. Williams up there uh, rolls a 42 for a 13. He'll strike out. First strikeout from uh, Ed Summers. One away, and here's Jim Stevens. Stevens rolls a 12 for a 24. It's a ground ball over to the shortstop. Schaefer throws the first for the out. Two away. Danny Hoffman up there now rolls a 44 for an eight. There's a single to left center. That'll bring up Bobby Wallace. <coughs> Normally, this would be a pretty obvious bunting situation, but uh, uh, unfortunately, there's two away. We can't bunt. Wallace rolls an 11 for a zero. How about this? And uh, then a 42 for a six. That's going to be a double that will score the runner. And uh, that's a little bit of a surprise. That makes this a 5-2 to two ball game. Here comes Bill Deneen. And now I think now it's a little bit more natural to pinch hit for him. But you're going to have to do the thing you have to do in 1908. Uh, 1908. Yeah, what season are we in? 1908 where you have to kind of ignore um, some of these uh, on-base percentage and slugging percentages for the uh, uh, pitchers, right, and uh, pretend that they're not so much better than the other players. <laughs> Al Schweitzer will come in for it to a pinch hit because the pitcher had a much better-looking uh, number of uh, uh, statistics than uh, Bobby Wallace, who's on his second. Al Schweitzer comes in as the pinch hitter here, bottom of the fourth, and so the uh, starting pitcher for the uh, Browns can't make it through uh, five innings today. Schweitzer uh, rolls a 14 for a 43, and there is a little E roll. Maybe he'll have some luck. It's a 54, so uh, no dice, and that's a fly ball over to Crawford and center for the out. We go to the top of the fifth, and now we take Schweitzer out, and we're going to do this trick again to try to make sure that uh, – we don't use guys who have been used a million times. Yeah, we're going to put in Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey will be the uh, uh, new pitcher. Here he comes. And there he goes. Okay, I don't know what I did wrong. Let's try this again. There we go. I have to click on change pitcher. And it's Matty McIntyre who will face him top of the fifth. McIntyre rolls a 13 for a 14 and walks. And so Bailey's wildness um, uh, immediately becomes apparent. And that brings up Ty Cobb. This could go very, very poorly, very, very quickly. Cobb. Rolls a 21 for a 32. It's a fly ball over to right field, and Hartzell has it for the out, one away. Cobb still in that slump. Claude Rossman now comes up. He rolls a 41 for a 28, and that's a ground ball over to the shortstop. Uh, Wallace, who looks over to second base, doesn't have a play, has to go to first with it. McIntyre's already in there at the bag. Two away, and here's Red Downs. And he rolls a 14 for a 43. There's a little E roll, though, and it's a 14 within the range. That changes the 43 to 17. That's going to be a uh, error on the right fielder, Hartzell, and that allows um, uh, McIntyre, the runner, to score, and that makes this a 6 to 2 ball game. And uh, that's the first error of the game on the Browns. Here comes Bosch Schmidt, and uh, he rolls a 55 for an 8. That's a, a ground ball over to Ferris, the third baseman, who uh, makes the play and throws the first for the out. And I straighten everything out here with the dice tray. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning in this uh, broadcast, a little bit slower than our normal 1908 fair. Hope Ferris, the uh, first hitter here for the uh, Browns, rolls a 12 for a uh, 24. Ground ball over to Schaefer at short, throws the first for the out, one away. Tom Jones now rolls a 24 for a 13, and he strikes out. Second strikeout for Ed Summers, two gone. Here's Roy Hartzell, rolls a 24 for a 13, and that's another strikeout. We'll go to the top of the six. Sam Crawford leads this off for the Tigers. Uh, with the big lead, Crawford rolls a 44 for a 7. That's a base hit to right field, and that'll bring up Ed Summers. And so Summers, of course, will bunt. O oh, for everything. He rolls a 23 for a 32, and it's a good bunt this time. It's a bunt over to the left side. Ferris has it and throws to first for the out, and Crawford moves up. Of course, last time Summers, when we bunted with him, he probably should have swung away. It would have been a base hit. Germany Schaefer now. Rolls a 42 for a 13. That's a strikeout. That'll be the second out. And here comes Red Kaleffer with uh, Crawford still perched on at second. Kaleffer rolls a 46 for a 27. That is a ground ball over to Ferris. Third baseman has it and throws to first for the out. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. George Stone will be up there for the Browns. George Stone rolls a 31 for a 9. It's a pop-up over to Kaleffer, the third baseman, for the first out. One away, and it's Jimmy Williams now. Jimmy rolls a 51 for a 9. That's a pop-up again to Kaleffer. Two away, two gone. Here's Jim Stevens. 
And he rolls a 41 for a 28. It's a ground ball to Schaefer, who makes the play and goes to first for the out. So uh, Summers, Ed Summers, is able to um, uh, get these Browns to pop the ball up, and he's got them guessing left and right. And here's Matty McIntyre now. The Browns pitching, meanwhile, has given up uh, more than its share of base hits, and McIntyre rolls a 61 for a 40. That's going to be a walk, thanks to that W. Walk number two given up by Bill Bailey. That will uh, bring up uh, Ty Cobb. Cobb rolls a 62 for a 12, and that's another walk, again, because of the W. And that'll bring up Claude Rossman, and this is where those Ws can really, really hurt you. And oh, those bases on balls, that old uh, baseball lament. Claude Rossman rolls a 62 for a 12, and that's another walk. And so three walks given up in a row by uh, Bailey. Bailey's spot is due up in the bottom of the seventh. We will probably pinch hit for him the way he's been pitching. Four walks given up here in a two-innings pitch. And his downs up there rolls a 32 for a 26. That's uh, They're playing the infield back, of course. That's a ground ball over to Williams, the second baseman, who goes to uh, Wallace, the second for one, then back on to Jones at first for the double play, but a run scores. And it's a 7-2 ball game now with Ty Cobb over on a third base and two outs. And here is Boss Schmidt. And uh, we're going to have to re-roll that one. That one somehow landed in between everything. There's the re-roll. It's a 13 for a 36. That stays a 36, and that's a wild pitch called on Bailey, and that will score the runner. It's 8-2 to two Tigers now. And Schmidt rolls an 11 for a 0, and his uh, next roll is a 22 for a 2, and that's a triple to left center field. That'll bring up Sam Crawford, hit number 11 for the Tigers after they just manufactured a couple of runs. And uh, Crawford rolls a 22 for a 0, and uh, he's going to hit higher in the order after this game. Man, he rolls then a 43 for an 8, and that's a single that will score the runner. That brings up Ed Summers, who suddenly has been elevated to having a 9-2 to lead. And uh, Summers rolls a 33 for an 8, so he gets in on the action and gets a base hit, sends Crawford over to 3rd. We're going to leave Bailey in there because we want to pinch hit for him. We don't want to go too nuts with the pitchers. And there it is. Uh, Schaefer rolls a 24 for a 13 for a strikeout. It's the second strikeout that uh, Bailey has collected so far. This baby's pretty much all but done. You can uh, stick a fork in her. Here's Danny Hoffman, bottom of the seventh. And uh, he rolls a 55 for an eight. That is a single for Hoffman. Only hit number five for the Browns. And then he's caught stealing, one away. Right now, we could probably turn off that steal, stolen base attempt. But um, I don't know. Here's Wallace, who rolls a 53 for an 18, changed to 19. That's going to be an error on Kaleffer, the uh, third baseman. It's not so surprising that he gets charged with an error. And uh, that brings up the pitcher spot now, and it's going to be, um, well, who? Uh, we don't want to put Blue in because he's, uh, well, I guess we will. He's one of the two catchers they have. He doesn't have any plate appearances so far. So Burt Blue comes into this game. I know nothing about this guy. He rolls a 56 for a 32. It's a fly ball over to right field. Cobb has it for the out. Two gone, and uh, here's Hope Fer Ferris, the uh, leadoff hitter. And he rolls a 22 for a 7. That's a single to right center field. That will send Wallace all the way over to third base, and that's hit number 6 off of Ed Summers. That brings up uh, Tom Jones. Rolls a 51 for a 9, and that is a single over short that will score 1 and send hit Ferris to second. So it's a 9-3 to three ball game now. The Browns now with 7 hits, and here comes Roy Hartzell. Hartzell rolls a 54 for a 45. It's a fly ball over to right field, and uh, Cobb, the right fielder, has that for the out. We are at the top of the eighth inning, and uh, we need to have a, a pinch hitter, or I'm sorry, relief pitcher. Otherwise, we're going to have blue up there, and that's uh, probably not what we want to do. So we know already we don't care about Waddell, Powell, um, or Hal. Those are the three starters. The question is Chris Graham, Pelty, or, or Pelty, and it's going to be Pelty, the first one I look at, who hasn't pitched yet. So... Barney Pelty will come into this game in the relief role. Um, hasn't done anything yet this season, and uh, he'll uh, face Red Kaleffer first. And the role is a 53 for a 21, changed to an 18. That's going to be an error on the shortstop, uh, the shortstop Wallace, and Kaleffer's on at first. This is the game that will not end is probably what you're feeling like as the offense just continues for the Tigers. Here's Manny McIntyre now. He rolls a 55 for an 8. That's a ground ball over to Ferris. Throws to first for the out. Kaleffer moves up to second, one away. And here he is, Ty Cobb, who's 0 for 3 with a walk today and scored a run. Uh, Cobb hit 268 the average with a 310 on base percentage and the slugging percentage almost 100 points higher than real life. Um, and uh, what does he do? He rolls a 46 for a 13 and strikes out, two away. And so there goes the legends of Cobb never striking out. He struck out there. Here's Claude Rossman now, two outs, top of the eighth. And he rolls a 53 for a 20, changed an 18, and that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop Wallace, who makes the play this time and throws to first for the out. We go to the bottom of the eighth. <clears throat> George Stone leads this off for the Browns. He rolls a 62 for a 12. Here's the little E roll. 
So 26, barely missing the range, and that means it's a ground ball over to Rossman, the first baseman who goes to the bag himself for the out. Went away. Jimmy Williams is up there now. He rolls a 14 for 43. Lily rolls a 12 inside the range, changes it to 22. That is an air on the pitcher, Summers. And here comes Jim Stevens, the catcher, with uh, Williams on at first. Only one out, bottom of the eighth, and the Browns hoping to do something. Stevens, though, rolls a 14 for 43. The little E rolls a 13, so it is within the range. That ends up being an air on the shortstop by Schaefer. Two airs here in a row for uh, the uh, Tigers. They've had four in this game. It's been a sloppily played one. There are runners at the corners. Uh, Summers will stay in this game. Um, I mean, with a six-run lead, there's no need to panic, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Hoffman is up there. This is sort of my uh, Achilles heel because I forget to uh, actually manage in a situation like this with the game out of hand. Hoffman will just swing away, and the swing is a 25 for an 8. It's a fly ball over to center field. Crawford has it for the out, and a runner scores, making this a 9-4 to game. And here comes Bobby Wallace, runners, runner on at first. Only one runner now, 9-4. to and uh, Wallace rolls a 45 for a 14. That's a ball that uh, Z helping to protect Summers. Next rolls a 15 for a 10. That's a single. Stevens goes to third. Wallace then steals second right afterwards. <coughs> and here comes decision time. And really not much of a decision, though. Uh, we're not going to hit with uh, Barney Pelty in this situation because um, if he gets a good roll, he's not going to be able to do much. Charlie Jones comes in to pinch hit for him, and the Browns have uh, managed this game like it's a real-life game like a 2023 game. Here's Jones. He rolls a 36 for a 33, but there is a little E-roll. It's a 52 out of the range. Pop up over the left side. Uh, third base, McAuliffer has it for the out. We go to the top of the ninth inning. And uh, so who do we do? Do we want Chris? Chris has been in three games. Uh, do we want Graham? Graham has not yet uh, made an appearance, and so it is going to be Bill Graham, the uh, relief pitcher, who will face uh, Red Downs top of the ninth. Red Downs rolls a 21 for a 30. Fly ball over the left field for the first out. One away. And here's Bosch Schmidt, who's one for four with that triple, and he had scored a run afterwards. This time he rolls a 21 for a 30. It's another fly ball to left field. Stone has it. Two away. And here's Sam Crawford. Crawford is four for four today. Four singles. Four for four, but only four singles, not helping that slugging percentage. And he rolls a 45 for a 14. He gets the walk and the steal second. So he's four for four now with a walk and a stolen base. And uh, I think two RBIs, a run scored. Pretty good game from Crawford. Up comes Ed Summers, <clears throat> and he rolls a 45 for a 36. It's changed over to a 40. It's going to be a fly ball over to right field, and uh, Hartzell has that for the catch. And uh, we go to the uh, bottom of the ninth inning. Hope Ferris up there facing Ed Summers. Summers looking for a complete game. He's given up eight hits and has overcome four errors, only giving up four runs in the process. Ferris rolls a 25 for an eight. That's a swift single to, le to a left center field, and that'll bring up Tom Jones. Jones today one for four with a single, and uh, he rolls a 64 for a 13. Strikes out for the second time today, one away. And here's Roy Hartzell with runner on at first base still for the Browns. Hartzell rolls a 41 for a 28, and that's going to be a ground ball over to second base. And Schaefer wanted to go over to Downs, but couldn't. Downs wasn't back to the bag in time, so he threw over to Rossman at first for the out. Ferris moves up. There's two away, and only one more needed for Summers, who's looking to go to uh, two and three on the year. And uh, the roll is a 36 for a 33. That's a pop-up over to the shortstop Schaefer, and that does it. So uh, Summers does go to 2-3. and three. He has a uh, small ERA under 2, but everybody's ERA is low. I'm not sure if you've uh, noticed that or not. Everybody's pitching well, mostly because uh, we're not using the real-life rotations. We're using my rotations. I think it kind of leans towards the pitchers a little bit. Final score here, Tigers 9, uh, Browns 4. 22 hits all together in this game. Another one of those games that doesn't feel like 1908. Though maybe 1908 wasn't the way that you think it was, and both teams now are 10 and 9. Hope you enjoyed this game, and I'll talk with you tomorrow with another game. Talk to you then. Bye.